managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of his children. I did speak to somebody and did a, a kind of an interview. They gave me their statement about time. And they started with the scripture of Deuteronomy 15.10, which says, give liberally and be ungrudgingly when you do so. For on this account, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and all you undertake. They said God, uh, tithing has strengthened them as a person and helped them to trust God, to have faith in God's provision. It helps to obey God and what's precious to me. and helps to be more generous helps me to understand my real source. The main purpose is to put God first because he owns the cattle. Also, tithing has so many benefits. It strengthens a person and makes you realize that it's not my doing, but all God's. Tithing has increased their faith in God's provision because the scripture says he owns the cabin on a thousand hills. There's also a scripture from 2 Chronicles 9, 6 through 7. And I think I have it. And maybe I don't. Okay, let us keep going. Our church was founded with members that believe in tithing by aunt and uncle, Miss Brooke, Deacon Brooke, and Miss Maggie Brooke, which is a deaconess, and they were faithful tithers. I like to challenge each and every one of us to start tithing. I know that it has been a struggle for me, especially during these COVID years, and we're not asking you to neglect your home and your personal finances, but I'd like to challenge each and every one of us to tithe. If I can do it, and I'm going to start, you know, maybe just one Sunday a month, but if I can do it, I know you can too. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Amen. Would all ushers please stand? We, the combined ushers of Good Shepherd Baptist Church, are thankful for the opportunity to observe our anniversary on this day. We would like to recognize the number of service for each ministry, the Mayo Ushers Ministry, 106 years of service, Ladies Auxiliary Ushers, 98 years of service. The Friendship Ushers Ministry, 78 years of service. And the Youth Ushers Ministry, 61 years of service. On behalf of all, we would like to present this donation to the video ministry. Thank you. May, you may be seated. <laughs> As we prepare for offering, if you missed an opportunity to place your offering or tithe in the basket, you may do so as the basket moves forward at this time. Please stand.
us pray. Heavenly Father, our hearts are full of gratitude. We thank you that you are the source of all our blessings. As we present our offerings and tithes, we remember your promise to open the floodgates of heaven when we honor you with our first fruits. May these gifts extend the work of your kingdom in your church, our community, and throughout the world. We give joy rooted in the faithfulness of your promise. Amen.
As I say to students in class, uh, the very question you asked that you were afraid to ask, 20 other people wanted to know. <laughs> so somebody wanted to know, what's a whole name? So <laughs> you got a whole name. From John's Gospel in chapter 12. Reading begins there at verse 12. My endeavor to be read through verse 19 from the New Revised Standard Version updated edition. This is the word of the Lord. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a don donkey's coat. His dis disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify. It was also because they had heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. The whole world has gone after him. Verses 12 through 19 of John's Gospel in chapter 12. The word of God for the people of God, blessed be the name of God. <laughs> As some might tell, we are working our way through um, a constant uh, order of worship for almost three years. I stood here looking at that mic, right, that camera right there, and uh, I did what I did. <laughs> and some of the leaders uh, encouraged me along the way, Pastor, let us give you some help. And I 
kept saying no, and I kept feeling my arm being twisted. So uh, we relented, and now we're trying to get an order of service that is consistent every Sunday. And Deacon Hester Brown said she made a mistake. No, you didn't make a mistake. However, it went. That's the way it was supposed to go. And we, we thank God for, for being able to share together in this space. And thank God for all of you. Didn't sound like it was on. Well, turn it up so, so I can't hear myself. Uh, I think you can't hear me. There you go. See? <laughs> now you're here. I heard a baby in the back somewhere. So, back there? That's good. I like that sound. I like that sound. Amen. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. If you pray with me for just a few moments, and I try not to hold you too long, I would reason with us this morning from the subject, the rest of the story. Let us pray. God, thank you for the blessings of life, health, and strength. Come now and stand up in a weak vessel. Lord, and preach this your gospel with power and with conviction. This I pray in the merciful, magnificent, mighty, and majestic name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Some of you may be old enough to remember back in the day um, a series called The Rest of the Story. It was a Monday through Friday radio program originally hosted by Paul Harper. It began as a part of his newscast during the Second World War, and then it premiered as a series on ABC radio network in 1976. The rest of the story consisted of stories represented as little known or forgotten facts on a variety of subjects with some key elements of the story, usually the name of some well-known person. And it held back this well-known person or thing until the end. The broadcast always concluded with a variation of the tagline, and now you know the rest of the story. At the time of our text, it was Passover time, and Jesus uh, was being sought after in various ways. The Jews had come from the ends of the earth to Jerusalem, and wherever Jews lived, it was their ambition to observe at least one Passover in Jerusalem. In addition to those who had come from afar, there were Jews who had come from within Palestine itself. The law required that every adult male Jew who lived within 20 miles of Jerusalem had to come to the holy city. On one occasion, a census was taken of the number of lambs slain at the Passover feast, and the number was given at 265,000. A minimum of 10 persons was required for each lamb. And if this estimate is correct, then there must have been approximately 2,700,000 people at the Passover feast. The crowd must have been enormous, and Jerusalem and all the surrounding vicinity must have been packed with people. All the hotels were full. <laughs> at Passover time, Jews remembered the deliverance of their ancestors from Egyptian bondage. Nationalistic feelings ran high during this time as the present generation of Israelites suffered under the yoke of Roman oppression. And during Passover, Messianic hope and expectation were strongest. During Passover, Sadducees and the Roman guards were always edgy because they were most concerned about keeping order. They feared that some incident would occur which might arouse the smoldering hostility and desire for freedom, which were always just below the surface of an uneasy peace, waiting for the right moment to burst forth. According to John's account, it was during the Passover that Jesus had come to nearby Bethany to see about his good friend Lazarus. You know the story. Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, and news about his greatest miracle had reached Jerusalem with his curious, restless, and hopeful crowd. Therefore, as Jesus headed toward Jerusalem, he was accompanied by an enthusiastic crowd that had been with him in Bethany. 
and had seen his mighty works. Word went ahead of Jesus that the person had been raised by, by uh, Jesus was Lazarus and he was raised from the dead. A crowd of Passover pilgrims, some of whom were curious, some of whom were well-wishers, and some of whom were uh, devout and lived in constant readiness to receive the Messiah. They went to greet Jesus and all of his followers. When the joyful Bethany crowd met with the expected Jerusalem crowd amid the celebrative atmosphere of the Passover around them, spontaneous combustion of excitement and spirit broke out everywhere. Jesus, who was riding on a donkey, was received like a conquering king. Some cut palm branches from the trees and waved them in the air and spread them along the road. Others spread their garments on the road, and the multitude shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. Matthew's gospel tells us that the whole city was moved. Here in our text, John tells us that the Pharisees expressed dismay remarking that the whole city had gone after Jesus. This had to have been a significant day for the disciples who had left everything to follow Jesus. It was also a very significant day for Jesus' friends who loved him. And I dare say it was also a significant day for the Lord himself. If the writers of the gospel had put down their pens and ended their account with Palm Sunday's triumphant entry into Jerusalem, we would have a very nice, neatly packaged, essentially trouble-free story. What better place for the gospel to end than at the moment when Jesus, the small town carpet-turning teacher and miracle-working prophet from Nazareth, rode in triumph to the praises and the multitude that was around him in big-time Jerusalem. What better place to end the gospel story than at the moment when Jesus is riding the crest of popularity, acceptability, respectability, and success? What better place to end the gospel than at the moment when the world seemed to be falling at Jesus' feet and his future looked brighter than ever? Yet, we know that if the gospels ended with the Palm Sunday event, they would be incomplete gospels. If the Gospels ended at Palm Sunday, we might think that Palm Sunday was Jesus' finest moment. Mm. If the Gospels ended with Palm Sunday, we might think that our Lord's message, ministry, and mission had truly been accepted and understood by those who cheered him. If the Gospels had ended with Palm Sunday, we might think that the crowd who greeted Jesus stayed with him. It's easy to be a part of a Palm Sunday crowd. Everybody likes a winner. Everybody likes to ride on the coattails or be on the team of somebody who seems to be going somewhere. When the multitudes are singing Jesus' praises, when following him is the end thing to do, and no demands are being placed on our obedience, our time, our talent, when no requests are being made of our money, it's easy to holler, Hosanna. Right. It's easy to join Jesus in the high moments of rapture and celebration. We naively wish that all moments could be like this moment. All right. But the Palm Sunday story, while gratifying, doesn't tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. There is the rest of the story. Chris, Christians who walk with Jesus only on Palm Sunday, when singings are going on and things are going well, everybody seems to be happy, they miss out on the real victory. Christians who see Jesus only as a conquering king living up to their expectations miss out on the real message, ministry, and mission of Jesus. People who don't go beyond Palm Sunday mentally miss out on the essence of the gospel. Yeah. All right. To understand who Jesus was, what Jesus was about, and what he had done for us and how he cares for us, what he can do for us, in us, and through us, we must go beyond Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Jesus' last week of earthly ministry before his death. And yet so much of what we know of the Gospels revolve around this last week. In Mark's Gospel, the Palm Sunday event appears in chapter 11. But his Gospel doesn't end at chapter 16. About one-third of Mark's Gospel is devoted to what happened after Palm Sunday. In Matthew's gospel, the Palm Sunday event is in chapter 21. 
But his gospel doesn't end in chapter 28. Mm -hmm. In the gospel of Luke, the Palm Sunday event is found in chapter 19. But his gospel doesn't end in chapter 24. About one-fourth of Matthew's and Luke's gospel tell us what happened after Palm Sunday. Right. In John's gospel, Palm Sunday occurs in chapter 12, but his gospel doesn't end to chapter 21. Almost half of John's gospel will be left out if we stop with Palm Sunday. All right. If we want to understand the gospels more fully, if we want to be the Christian that God would like for us to be, we yeah. must go beyond Palm Sunday in our attitude toward life. Yeah. We must go beyond Palm Sunday in our thinking yeah. about religion. We must go beyond Palm Sunday in our thinking about Christ. Yeah. We must go beyond Palm Sunday in our living unto God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. To attain the fullness of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must go beyond Palm Sunday. When we, when we follow Jesus on Monday after Palm Sunday, we are when he went into the temple and saw merchants buying and selling and scheming and exhorting, cheating and lying, and drove them out of his father's house. Right. If we are to go beyond Palm Sunday's naivete, yeah. we must first come to grips with the imperfections of the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So many times, seasoned as well as new Christians have become discouraged because we see so much of the shame, same kind of behavior and attitude in the church that we see in the world. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. To amen. some extent, amen. I think that we all wish the church as we know it were perfect. But if it were, were perfect, neither you nor I could belong to it. The church is not made up of perfect people, but rather imperfect people who are tri striving for perfection. As in every struggle, sometimes we fail and sometimes we succeed, but we keep on striving just the same. And although our churches and our efforts are not perfect, we are still in God's house. Yeah. And because we're in God's house, and now and then Jesus shows up. Jesus comes by. Yeah. Whenever we stray too far away from where we ought to be, Jesus has a way of shaking us, yeah. awakening yeah. us, yeah. and bringing us back in line. Yeah. We must go beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus on Tuesday yeah. after Palm right. Sunday. When he debated with those who criticized him and tried to discredit his teaching. On Palm Sunday, we easily can become lost in the ecstasy of the crowd and believe that everybody appreciates what's going on. We must go beyond Palm Sunday and discover that righteousness also has its foes. Contrary to what might at first glance seem to be the case, everybody was not rejoicing on that special Sunday. Amen. Not everybody appreciated the many acts of praise. Mm -hmm. Some were jealous because of the attention others received on Palm Sunday. They questioned and challenged individuals not to learn, but to just make themselves look good in other folks' eyes and just All make right. people angry. They tried to take away the joy of the exuberant crowd and cause them to doubt themselves and their faith. And they That's still right. do that. Yeah. They mock us for being who we are these people who are supposed to be Christ's image bearers. But the admonition for us here today is that we cannot allow a Tuesday devil to take our Palm Sunday spirit. Right. We cannot allow a Tuesday yeah. gossip to steal yeah. our Sunday joy. Right. We cannot allow a Tuesday busybody to deter us from yeah. business of the kingdom. That's we cannot right. lose our religion all, all, because, all because of some Tuesday critic. Like all right. Jesus, all we can do is to answer them with the power of God and hold on to our faith without wavering. Yeah. Yeah. We must go beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus on Wednesday after Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. While there isn't unanimity on the point, uh, Class Wednesday is often referred to as Spy Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Some believe that on this day, Judas agreed to betray Jesus to the Jewish leaders yeah. for 30 pieces of silver. The high priest was worried. The Jewish authorities want to eliminate Jesus. They had to act while he was still in the city because Passover is, is on the horizon. They had to act quickly. Unexpected help came from Judas, the treasurer of the group of 12 right. disciples. Mm, let me stick a pen right there. You got to watch the folk you run with. They are, 
to stab you in the back while they talking to your face. Amen. Know who you're dealing with. Yes. As I said to the class yesterday, Dre, you run with and lay down with dogs. Finish that for me. Get up with fleas. Get up with fleas. I ain't the only one heard that. So you have to be careful. Unexpected help came from Judas. He was one, the treasurer in the group. On Wednesday, according to Matthew and Mark, while Jesus was dining, he received one of the last kindnesses of his earthly life. A woman, a sister, out of a heartfelt love and gratitude, poured a flask of costly perfume upon Jesus, lifting his spirit. This kindness shown to Jesus caused some of the disciples, Judas in particular, to become upset and their reaction is instructive for us. One of the painful lessons we learn when we go beyond Palm Sunday is that every church, every family, every circle of friends and associates has a Judas. All right. Sometimes those who uh, do us the greatest harm are not those on the outside of the fellowship. Often those who do us the most harm are from within the fellowship. But for every Judas who betrays our trust, there's someone else who responds to our kindness with an act of love and thanksgiving. For every Judas who discourages us, there's someone who lifts our spirits. For every Judas who tries to tear us down, there's someone else who constantly is trying to build us up. For every Judas who digs a ditch to us, there's someone who gives us a helping hand and anoints us for greater service. For every Judas who earnest desire is to hurt us, there's always someone who is forever trying to comfort us. There's always someone by our side. Watch who you're running with. We must go beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus to the Thursday after Palm Sunday. Follow Jesus to the upper room where he sat down with his disciples with that last supper and broke bread and said, this, take, eat, this is my body. Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to all of them and said, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. When we go beyond Palm Sunday, we will learn to say goodbye to those whom we love. When we go beyond Palm Sunday, we can make sacrifices for those we love, even though uh, present circumstances dictate that our sacrifices are in vain. Has anybody here done something for somebody and act like they didn't appreciate what you did? Is there somebody who you just took your your last and gave it to them and they act like you ain't doing nothing? There's somebody here who knows that there are some thankless folk around here. Keep following Jesus on Thursday into the Garden of Gethsemane where in his humanity he struggles. Hear again his unforgettable prayer in Matthew 26, 39. My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When we go beyond Palm Sunday, we can pray our way through our darkest hours until we gain victory, which comes by faith. Follow Jesus further on Thursday. He has given the kiss of death by a misguided, soon-to-be-repentant Judas. Keep following Jesus as he stood before his accusers with the power to destroy. Yet he never said a mumbling word. When you go beyond Palm Sunday, you can face Satan's rage in a spirit of peace and calmness with the certainty that God has always had all power in his hands. When you go beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus on Good Friday, we're going to get him up on Friday, uh, put him on the cross and get him up on Sunday. As he bore that old rugged cross going up the Calvary's rugged brow, you remember the brother Simon of Cyrene who stopped by by the help of the Lord to help Jesus up that cross. For Jesus still says to us, if anyone would come after me, let him uh, have the security of the Palm Sunday crowd, deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me daily. When we go beyond Palm Sunday, we follow Jesus uh, to and through an agonizing death on an old rugged cross. And then if we continue, we follow Jesus to the tomb where the authorities hastily laid him and waited to another day because they needed to properly bury his body. When we go beyond Palm Sunday, we learn to bury our pain in the face of heartbreaking Calvary-like experiences and then wait on God for his next move. Going beyond Palm Sunday helps us to run on and see what the end is going to be. 
We have learned on our Christian walk that the hellhounds may dog your every footsteps. They may brutalize and mistreat you. They may treat you like everything but a child of God. They may even succeed in crucifying you. But God's faithfulness to us has shown us that it's yeah. not over yeah. until God says it's over. Yeah. God always has the last word yeah. in and over every circumstance in your life. So don't you give up because things are going rough right now. I thought you said you trusted the God and loved the God and served the God who owned the cattle upon a thousand That's hills. Right. If God can take care of the grass in the field, don't you think he can take care of you? Someone might ask the question, does, does the gospel end here? Well, the good news is that the answer is a resounding, emphatic no. The good news is it doesn't have to that, doesn't end there. Matthew's gospel records Jesus' crucifixion and burial in chapter 27, but there's another chapter left. In Mark's gospel, the crucifixion and burial are found in chapter 15, but there's another chapter left. In Luke's gospel, the crucifixion and burial are found in chapter 23, but there's another chapter left. In John's gospel, the crucifixion and burial are found in chapter 19, but there are two more chapters left. When we remember that we must never forget that when we go beyond Palm Sunday, we'll always find that there's another chapter beyond Good Friday. There's another chapter beyond suffering and tribulation. Another chapter beyond headaches and pain. Another chapter beyond sickness and death. There's even another chapter Beyond Satan and sin, it's a chapter that tells the story of faithful women. You know the sisters who got up early in the morning, went to the tomb to anoint a dead body, but received a message from a living angel about a living God whom Calvary could not destroy, a living God whom death could not keep, a living God whom the grave could not hold. It's a chapter that tells about a real victory of Jesus Christ. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he dismounted from a donkey. But when Jesus arose on Easter Sunday morning, resurrection morning, he arose to dismount no more. John on the Isle of Patmos, you know the brother, he said, I saw heaven open and beheld a white horse. He who sat upon it is called faithful and true. On his robe and his thigh, he has a name inscribed, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The real victory was not seen by any great Palm Sunday multitude, but by the faithful who walked with Jesus beyond Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. If we would share in the real victory, then we must go beyond Palm Sunday and witness the Jesus in the temple on Monday, defend him on Tuesday, comfort him on Wednesday, pray with him on Thursday, bear a cross with him on Friday, and wait for Jesus on Saturday. Then we can shout victory on yeah, Sunday yeah, morning yeah, as we yeah. receive the good news from the angel that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he's risen. Yeah. He has risen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He has risen. Yeah. Go beyond Palm Sunday. And then with the help of Almighty God, go beyond Resurrection yeah. Sunday. And you will get the rest of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. The rest of the story. Don't stop with jubilation. Get the rest of the story. And then when you get the rest of the story, go shout and tell somebody. I know a man from Galilee. Tell somebody, I was sick and he came to visit me. Tell somebody, I was in the courtroom, he was my lawyer. Tell somebody. And I didn't know where I was going from here, but the Lord picked me up. Set my feet on a solid rock. Sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. Sometimes I'm kneeling in spots and places, but I never forget the call on the name of Jesus. He rolled into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday morning, but he rides with me all the time. I know God is a mighty good God. Is there anybody here who knows that God is good? Anybody here who knows that God will lift you up? Anybody here who knows that God will? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. The rest 
of the story. It's all right. Let us pray. It's all right. Amen. God, thank you. Thank you for grace and mercy. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the fact that Jesus rode into Jerusalem triumphantly yes, on that memorable day. But Lord, we thank you for the fact, the reality, the certainty that Jesus rides with us right now yes, as we try to make it through this thing we call life. Yes, right. Thank you, Lord, thank you, for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this special day in the life of the Christian church everywhere. When we remember that Jesus rode in triumphantly to spend his last week of earthly life. We thank you for the event of Holy Week. And we thank you, Lord, on this Lenten trek that we have an opportunity in a small way to identify with Jesus and all that he went through. Lord, bless us now as we make our way to Resurrection Sunday. Bless us with your peace, your presence, and your power, even your prosperity from day to day. This we ask in the merciful, magnificent, mighty, and majestic name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There might be somebody here whose desire it is to join us as we try to make sense of our faith. We've been at, at this now for almost 106 years. As I said earlier, sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't, but we keep on struggling nonetheless because we're on our way to heaven. If you are here and it is your desire to join us in this great endeavor as we walk toward Jesus in our home in glory, as the choir sings, we bid you come in the name of the Lord.
still works. Thank you, choir. Uh, it's always good when we can enjoy this in the moment <laughs> and then go back later today and pull it up on YouTube and enjoy it all over again. We thank God. Thank God. Please allow me to thank again all those who are worshiping with us as guests today. God bless you uh, for being here. I thought you lived in New York something. You moved in November, okay. Because <laughs> I, I know you was in class. I said New York, oh, okay. Okay, Dre, you here in Richmond too? No, sir. I didn't, th I didn't think you were in Richmond. All right, amen. amen. It, it, uh, I, I can't explain how it feels when you have dealt with students over several semesters and and they take the time to come from wherever they are just to worship Amen. with you. Amen. And I thank God for that. Amen. 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 And Dre is one who during because it's like it's like you. You 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 see the struggles that you know leaders go through and you reach out to them. And that's the kind of thing that, that happens with them. They know that we we instructors have trials and tribulations too. Amen. And they pray for us and they send a note every now and then praying for you, lifting you up and and that's that's always good. Thank you for Good Shepherd for their prayer last week. Amen. Uh, that's that's a foundational piece that's gonna last a long time. Um, when the going gets rough, I can just remember that the church took time to pray for the pastor and his wife. Um, you have some, some measure of idea of what I go through. You don't know what she goes through. Because uh, I try not to bring church home too much, but you know. <laughs> but I thank God for, for her being there for uh, over 40 years of, of ministry. I thank God. And I know we don't look that old. <laughs> but I thank God. I thank God. God bless you, uh, choir, under the direction of the, uh, the master, W. Weldon Hill. We thank God. Accompanied by Jonathan Cobb. We thank you. Thank you, United Voices. And y'all came up with a new one today. Yeah. And I think y'all left the verse off. <laughs> that thing was good eh? that's why I go back home now and listen to it again God bless you thank you ushers here and ushers around the wall God thank bless all of you all our ushers all our ushers and we thank God for the crew upstairs Pat Al, Trees and Michelle God bless you I'm thankful to those persons that I saw when the offering plate went around and said, no, wait up, hold up, i got to get my money in there. Uh, someone from across here, two sisters upstairs, and thank God for, for you. When we come into the sanctuary, there should be somebody there with a basket. Uh, since COVID struck, we don't pass the basket anymore. Uh, even though we are relaxing protocols, we don't pass the basket. So. If you come in, you should see an usher with a basket. And if, if that's, uh, if we can keep that in mind, we will, we will do well. A lot of this we're trying to get used to because we, we never did it like this before. Um, but like the children of Israel coming out of bondage, they didn't have a map. They didn't have a map. They followed how God led them. So God is leading us to get the situation such that we can Go through the service with our eyes closed and know everything is all right. Amen. God bless all of you for being here today. Uh, be good to yourself and better to others as we move forward in these uncertain days. This is Holy Week. <laughs> A lot of things are going on. Uh, Clarence, you know, they, we talked about no, no class on Good Friday. Good Friday. And one of my students in the Saturday class asked me, are we going to have class on Easter Saturday? <laughs> I ain't never heard of Easter Saturday. What is Easter Saturday? <laughs> yeah, they come up with any kind of thing. 
Yeah, they do. But we thank God for them. We thank God for them. And thank God for you. Won't you rest on your feet now as we make preparation to leave this place? Thank God for Deacon Hester Brown as our worship leader. Yeah. And she feels so much better now. <laughs> I encourage us, um, our children, especially on third Sunday, and any adults who want to share in the worship service as worship leader, we invite you to come. There are persons who will walk you through uh, what we are trying to do in terms of the order of service, and we'd be just glad to, to have you. There are so many of you who are just waiting, I'm sure, to get that opportunity. So please let me know, let someone in Deacon Ministry know so that we can put you on the list. We want everybody to have an opportunity to serve. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Now the bell choir started us off today and they did a tremendous job. We thank God for that. There, I don't know if, Marsha, you know of any other? No, we Multi-talented. <laughs> You know of any other churches that have a bell choir? How there, many? There are four of them. Four of them. Out of the, yeah. at a hundred churches, and, and really four of them got a bell choir. And we got the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for all of you. And you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And Sister Coward, make them take you to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse today. <laughs> <laughs> and Sister Coward, make them take you to Bruce Chris Steakhouse today. <laughs> and Sister Coward. Make them take you to Bruce Chris Steakhouse. This is the power. Make them take you to Bruce Chris Steakhouse. <laughs> 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 